hello and welcome to my youtube channel my name is john rose and in today's video i'm going to take a closer look at the top eight minerals in the human body i'm also going to take a look at the top eight elements in the earth's crust i'm also going to take a closer look at seven major components of weight and four main elements that make up 96 percent of the human body Let's begin by taking a look at the top eight elements in the Earth's crust. Interestingly, the top four of those elements represent 87.4% of the elements in the Earth's crust, and not one of those are in the top eight minerals in the human body. The top four of those elements are all acidic. Oxygen at 46.6%, silicone at 27.7%, that makes it 72.3%. Then we have, or 74.3%. Then we have uh, aluminum at 8.1. Now we're at uh, 82.4. Iron is number four, and that's at 5%. Now we got 87.4%. The next four elements in the Earth's crust would be calcium, sodium, potassium, and magnesium 3.6 2.8 2.6 2.1 that's 11.1 and 87.4 that's 98.5 percent of the earth's crust comes from those eight elements and once again the top four of those elements 87.4 percent are not in the top eight minerals in the human body the number one mineral in the human body would be calcium at 43.3 percent Next, we have phosphor at, phosphorus at 21.7. Now we're at 65%. Now we got chlorine at 14.5. That's 79.5%. Potassium at 8.6. Now we're at 87.1%. The next four, we have sulfur at 5.4. Sodium, 2.7. Fluorine, 2.7. Magnesium, 1.1. 99% right there in those top eight minerals in the human body. Now... I'm eventually going to get around to the best source of getting those, which is really the main purpose of this video. But let's continue onward and take a look at how those minerals are reflected in the human body. Remember, there's seven major components of weight. And one of those would be our minerals. A person my size would have about 4% of my body weight would be minerals, assuming I don't have any accumulated morbid matter or any current waste matter. And then the remaining 96% will come from four main elements. Hydrogen, oxygen, carbon, nitrogen. So if we look at those other six major components of weight, two-thirds of our body approximately should be water, hydrogen and oxygen. Then one half of the remaining dry weight would be protein. Now we have hydrogen, oxygen, carbon, and nitrogen. Now two amino acids also have sulfur, and two amino acids also have iodine. But nonetheless, the bulk of our amino acids come from those four main elements. Now we have two storage forms of energy, carbohydrates and fat. And they're made up of hydrogen, oxygen, and carbon also. The other two components of weight would be our current waste matter and any accumulated morbid matter, in case we have either one of those. Now, when you eat like I eat, when I wake up in the morning, I got rid of everything I ate the day before, so I don't even have any current waste matter until I start eating, and when I get back home, I'll eat, and now I'll be processing food, and I'll have some for the rest of my day. But I start off my day getting rid of all that stuff, so I don't even have any current waste matter. And I got rid of that accumulated more matter a long time ago by taking a solid food vacation. So here we are, seven major components of weight made from four main elements, eight top elements in the human crust, top four are not in the top eight minerals, but there are more minerals besides those eight. There's another... 10 or so that we should be aware of in alphabetical order. We have chromium, cobalt, copper, iron, or iodine, iron, molybdenum, <laughs> or manganese, molybdenum, I have a hard time pronouncing that sometimes, selenium, vanadium, and zinc. Now, what's the best source for these minerals? from the ground, from the crust of, the, of, of our planet, the Earth's crust, that's where we get our minerals from. And the best source for our minerals will come from our leafy greens. And 
and there was something I was going to say that just eluded me right now. Um, and where was I? Boy, I tell you, that's that's frustrating. Um, I know I. I don't want to go into this next topic this early, but the point here is that we're all stardust, right? When a really big star explodes, a supernova, that creates all the heavier elements. That's what creates all of the, the planets and, and suns and, 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 and satellites. They're all round, folks. Wake up. Nothing's flat out there. I'm going to delete all that crap comments. I'm getting tired of that psyop here, by the way. But all those heavier elements, all those trace minerals that we need are going to be in the Earth's crust. Now I remember what I was going to say. And we can't eat the dirt. We've got to have a plant bring it to life. And that is one definition of an organic mineral. Now, if we use chemistry's definition, Organic simply means it has a carbon atom attached and minerals don't have that so it's not organic in that respect But it is organic because it's coming from something that's living and even the plants can't eat the minerals They've got to let the bacteria get a hold of them first and and and, and Transform them before the plants can even get to them So our best source of minerals is to come from the plants that get it from the ground that get it from the microbes turning the mic the uh, the these uh, minerals into something that we can use. Now, there is a belief of what's known as biological transmutation, where it is claimed that none of the calcium we eat even goes to the bones, that it's all used for the myelin sheet, and that our body can take regular f minerals from the food, like potassium and mag magnesium, and silica, and then combine that with free-floating forms of hydrogen, oxygen, and carbon, and transmute and create calcium. That's the, that's the ongoing theory. And this biological transmutation is also supposed to be the basis behind what some people believe is possible. Uh, and I'm talking about breatharianism. Now how do people live off of air? How can they get everything they need from the sunshine and the air? Well, the theory goes it's biological transmutation, that the body is able to create certain things based on other things. Interesting to think about it. I haven't done near enough research in there to, you know, on this topic to have a decent opinion on it. But I've read about it, and even Dr. Gabriel Cousins goes as far as thinking that this is why biological indivi individuality can be explained. And I've talked about this concept before on biological individuality. I know there's a oneness of disease and there's that uniqueness of disease, the uniqueness, which is what some people call biochemical individuality. And that's what I say is based on our individual damage. Now, what Cousins is going to say is that he's noticed in his clinical practice that as people get healthier, they don't need as much supplementation anymore. And that's what I have been saying all along, that biochemical individuality is based on the damage that's done. And most of it's temporary impairment. So as we get healthier, we don't have those other needs anymore because we're no longer damaged. And according to Cousins, his conclusion, I think, was faulty. He just believed that because they're healthier, they're now able to transmute the things they needed and they don't need to supplement it. I don't think it works that way. The body was damaged and it needed things to heal it. Now that it's healed, it doesn't need those things anymore. To me, that makes more sense logically. So the concept of biological transmutation is an interesting uh, concept. It's pretty much poo-pooed by everyone else, and perhaps one of the best ways to study this, instead of reading the book on biological transmutation, by this uh, French doctor, Kerveran, K-E-R-V-R-A-N, something like that. That's how it's spelled. I'm not sure how it's pronounced. But it's also mentioned in that great book, The Secret Life of Plants by Bird. They talk about how biological transmutation works. And it's an interesting... Uh, concept and it just goes to show you how much how, how little we know about everything about bio, biology and everything um, and again I, when it comes to the biochemical individuality aspect of it 
when it comes to the to the to those uh, uh, diseases that are unique to each person, that's only temporary for most of us. And again, as we get healthier, we won't have these individual differences as we do now. So, what is the best source of minerals? Do we really need all this calcium? And isn't it interesting how the things they say are really high with the RDAs, like the calcium and the iron and the zinc, all those are found in protein are in animal products. Those RDAs can't be trusted, my friends. You can't go by those. Our RDAs in this country are so elevated because of the high acidic diet that we consume. Take the Bantu women in Africa. They only consume 450 milligrams of calcium, and they're known to have up to nine or ten children, which is supposed to really be taxing on a woman's bones. If you don't have much calcium, the baby's going to get it and take it from the mama. And yet these women are having all these children only consuming a small amount of calcium and their bones are really strong. Is it because of biological transmutation or is it because they're a vegetarian tribe? You know, there's so much confusion around this subject. There are a lot of, there's a lot of people who are controlled opposition. They're going to try to confuse us on this subject of, of what's acid and what's alkaline. And they're going to always change the focus and get you focusing on the blood and, and get you tripped up because none of them really understand the limb system. That's when the body's acidic because that's where the true acid comes from. It's not coming from the blood. The blood's got to be alkaline all the time. If it doesn't, you're in shock and you're in the hospital and they got a uh, saline solution into you to, to alkalize your blood. When we talk about the acidic condition of the body, it has nothing to do with the blood. It has to do with the lymph system, the bathroom, and how that backs up into the tissues, making the tissues acidic. So we know disease comes from the acid side of chemistry. It comes mainly from things that don't belong inside of us. Remember, our bodies are alkaline by design and acid by function. You look at those eight minerals I talked about, 54.7% of those are alkaline, 44.3% are acidic. So we're alkaline by design, but we're acidic by function. Our cells have to eat and they eliminate when they eat, it's acid. And we have a bathroom to deal with that acid side of chemistry. It's a lipid-based, cholesterol-based fluid to deal with the acid side of chemistry. So we need cholesterol to deal with the acid side of chemistry. We also need calcium to deal with the acid side of chemistry. So it's very confusing when you try to make some sense out of this. Should I take a calcium pill? If I am, what kind of should I take? If you're ever going to take any type of supplement, my friends, please take a whole food supplement. You're not supposed to take an isolated anything. It can really throw you off big time. You got to get it the way it, it's, it's coming to you in nature. I know when I first got into this, collodial minerals were the big thing that people talked about. And again, I'm not really big into this type of supplementation. I believe that our minerals should be coming from our food. One of the best reasons I know to take a solid food vacation on juices because you can load up on those vegetable juices in a way you could never load up on them if you had to eat them. There's so many benefits to a solid food vacation. You give your body a, a much needed vacation from having to digest everything. A lot of energy goes to just processing food. If you need to heal, we don't want to waste any more energy. Do we, should we be obsessed with minerals and deficiencies? Yes, we have to understand that that's a big part of the equation. According to Dr. Max Gerson, all disease based on toxicity and deficiency in the two main deficiencies he pushed was the potassium and the iodine. He went as far as saying that, that all chronic disease begins with a loss of potassium on an intracellular level. And of course we know iodine is needed for our immune system. And he was very much against processed salt because that's sodium and chloride. You look at the table of elements and you'll see sodium and potassium are in, in the same column and chloride and iodine are in the same column. So sodium and chloride can displace the potassium and the iodine. Another thing I thought was interesting about Dr. Gerson, because he was around that era where they started growing food on artificial fertilizers and he noticed right off the bat when the chemical revolution hit in the 40s, he said babies are now being born with cancers, leukemia. Because when you grow food on artificial fertilizers, it creates a, a sodium potassium imbalance in the soil. Now the plants become so sick they can't even defend against themselves, which is why they have to use the pesticides, supposedly. Big mistake. 
when we start using chemicals with our food. And that's by design. Remember, chemicals is one of the forms of black magic that's used against us to control us. And the people who control us are magicians. Look, it's magic. It looks like food, but it's not. It has a sodium potassium imbalance. It doesn't have near the amount of vitamins and minerals it should. We lose 83% of those biophotons when our food isn't grown on fertile soil and then sprayed with pesticides. And of course, the number one mistake that we make, that, that we make that puts us in this whole position is the cooking of the food. That's what destroys the biophotons 100%. It turns those organic minerals into inorganic. But John, there's no carbon attached. They're not organic, but they are because they're living or they were until we killed it. Don't kill your minerals. Don't kill your food. Don't kill the biophotons. Don't kill the enzymes. Don't lose the vitamins and the minerals, the antioxidants and the phytochemicals. And don't be tricked by thinking you're going to get a little bit more beta carotene or beta glucon or beta carotene and some lycopene by cooking it. That's a trick. We're being fooled all the time. Because the people who rule the world, that's what they are. They're con artists. And life is one big con. And most people just don't understand the knowledge of how to live. That when we nurture our environment the right way, that environment will determine the quality of our lives. And that's all we have to do is wake up to that reality. That's what my YouTube channel is all about. Is to help you become the best that you can be so that you can turn around and make the environment and everyone you know the best that you can be, or they can be. And when all that happens, We'll all be in for a treat.